are you doing? You're scattering seeds and stalks everywhere. And Alice? Yeah? How do you address me? Um, mistress? Yes, mistress. Sorry, mistress. Sorry, mistress. <laughs> Someone at the door, Alice? You're right, mistress. There is indeed someone at the door. Well, go. Alice leaves and returns with Belia, Alice determinedly leading the way. Thank you, Alice. Take your herbs into the pantry and lay them on a clean cloth to dry. Why you took that girl in, I'll never know. She hasn't the scent she was born with. I can train her. She's young, malleable. Mm. Well, I wish you luck with that. Uh, look, this came by messenger. Can you read it? Belia, you can read as well as me. Not Latin. Not like you. Latin? Official? Yes. Well, I can make out Abraham's name, but not much else. Your brother-in-law? Mm. <sighs> can you smell that? Oh, I hate this time of year. Autumn? Oh, I love laying up stores of beans and drying herbs and roots. Oh, yes, yes, all of that. But I mean this. This? Sniff! The smell! The smell of the pig meat being smoked. As if the sounds of their slaughter the other day wasn't bad enough. Oh! We live amongst Christians, Bilia. We've done so for hundreds of years. We have to accept their customs. Mm. Do they accept ours? <coughs> <coughs> so? Oh, Belia, it's not good. It's a notice of arrest. No, the, the old trouble. <laughs> no, not that. Burton, theft. Theft? Well, that will mean a huge fine, I bet. At best. You know they've been after him since... Since the St. Swithin's thing. Oh, that was a terrible time for us. Our family name was dragged through the mud like they need an excuse. I, I need to go and see Abraham. Get his defence in place. That's her, isn't it? She's sister to the baby killer. She's not. <laughs> its eyes were poked out and its heart pulled from its little body. And it was discovered very soon after, Alice, that the boy's mother did it. Abraham did give her shelter, but he was completely exonerated. Charges dropped. Pardoned. Set free? Oh, right. <clears throat> now, if you were to carry on being part of this household, you must be careful not to repeat, repeat slander or any, anything like that about Belia's brother-in-law, or any of us. It does none of us any good. That's why you had to take me. I beg your pardon. I keep my mouth shut. Besides, no other Christian girl would work in a Jew house. And no Jew house would normally be allowed to employ you. Yeah. It's the law. And no Christian household would have you, Alice. That's not fair. That kitchen fire was not my fault. That bitch laid it at my door. Besides, I don't listen to slander. It's envy and fear. Because there are a few, a very few, very few successful Jews. Like you, an old sourpuss. Yes, like me and like um, Belia who lent money, a great deal of money, to the king and the church. As King, king Henry's father said, Jews are here for the utility of Christians. You've done all right for yourself. Look at this house. Centre of Winchester. Don't get much better. My dad's lucky if he earns a mark a year. A year! Yes, and I earn my wealth because I work hard and I use my brain. And because, like Belia, I had a start. I inherited my husband's business. Nice. But look around. Look at this very street. Most Jews live in extreme poverty, restricted to certain trades, not allowed to own land. But they still <laughs> pick on you. Why? I'll tell you why, you little ignoramus. Because Christians are not permitted to dabble in usury. Usury. Money lending, Alice. <gasps> Money lending. That I understand. And Christians are not allowed to work for Jews. So what do your people think of your new employment, Alice? The way I look at it, my people are far, far away in Romsey. <laughs> so I can't hear them. And I live here day and night. And I'll tell you another thing. Hmm? I don't listen to what people say. 
because they are mostly stupid and the mistress is mostly clever. Alice, go into the garden and gather more herbs. I think there might be a frost tonight. Scene two, a few weeks later, sounds of shouting and mayhem in the street. Melia enters in a rush. Oh, Lucretia, do you know what they are doing? Can you hear? I've been hearing shouting all morning. You took a risk in coming here. You didn't see. They are dragging him in a cart. In, in a fucking cart. Around the city walls, all around Winchester. Hundreds of people stand at the west gate, jeering, throwing things. Oh, Belia. Have you seen where the gallows are placed? I haven't dared leave the house. Not 50 yards from your doorstep. Outside the jail. Outside the but jail. That's... Opposite our shul. <laughs> Bastards. And where will Abraham be buried? Will his body be given to the elders? Will he be taken to our cemetery with some semblance of dignity? Calm yourself. Oh, that's easy for you to say. You never, ever liked Abraham. You thought he was shady. Not enough to see him torn to... I mean, to have this happen. But it is fucking happening. And we can't do anything ex except cower in our houses in case we're next. We will wait until the crowds have gone, and then sit Shiva for Abraham. These so-called Christians. Would their Jesus behave like this? Would he? No, I don't think he would, Leo. How can you be sure? Because he was Jewish. He was brought up to respect God's laws in the same way we are. I thank the Lord that my husband was not alive to see his brother's shame. Come, Leo. Cry. Let it out. No, don't worry. I'll grieve in my own good time. Hypocrites. Without us, they wouldn't be able to buy land, buy their holy houses. Yes, and that protects us. They are always in debt to us. But does it? What protection did Abraham have from that, that mob? Not a shred of proof that he stole so much as a group. You know it was personal. He took a risk lending to Peter LaRoche. Oh, who never, ever intended in paying him back. Bishop of Winchester. What an ungodly man. What a fraud. Bella, I am so sorry. I tried. Did you? Did you try hard enough, Lucretia? The king. <clears throat> the king? Oh, the king. But he does nothing for us, nothing. Happy enough to borrow money from us. Happy enough to levy fines and outrageous taxes. Brilliant. Quite the crush out there. Some huge wanker stood on my head. <laughs> <laughs> Still, I got a great view of this. <laughs> oh, you did, did you? Oh, how marvellous. Such sparkling entertainment for the peasants. Is it over? Yes. They're just taking what's left, uh, removing the body from the... Gallows, yes. What have they done with it? Well, <laughs> they were rolling it, him, uh, into a hole at the foot of the gallows. What? They are not allowing us to bury him. No rites, no, no prayers. That can't be true. I'll go. No, it's not safe. No, it's not. What they're saying about Jews? Make your hair stand up. Just stay here. Please. I mean, what, what, what can we two widows do against that crowd? What can anyone do? They're like rabid dogs. That's them, all right. And I've heard... What? What did you hear? There's a rumour going round that the king will take his house. Oh, no. But our synagogue is in its grounds. Giving it to his cook, apparently. Is there no end to the ways they insult us? No. I don't think there will ever be an end. Scene three, the year is 12.40. Alice enters with some folded cloths. Thank you, Alice. Those can go in the trunk. How long will you be gone, mistress? Long enough. Three days to Oxford and then settling the debt to the king. Could be a week, ten days before I'm back. Wish you'd take me. Especially now you've got those hunks with you. I can't guarantee your safety any more than I can guarantee mine. That's why I've hired the hunks. 
and to protect the money and the bonds you'll take with you. Exactly so. What will you wear? The blue cloak with silver and gold tassels. And the red shot silk tunic trimmed with rabbit fur. Oh, and take the French cloak too. You want me to make quite the splash in Oxford? Yes, you're representing Winchester, mistress. You need to make us proud. I'll try. I'll pray to my God that you travel safe. Your God? We all, Jews and Christians alike, even the Moors, all worship the same God. So you say? I do. Well, you knock their eyes out, and I'll make sure that lazy cows take proper good care of the little ones. Scene four, ten days later. Valia and Alice are on stage, and Licorishia enters in her travelling coat. Welcome back, Licorishia. You have been missed. <laughs> what was Oxford like? What was the king like? Was Queen Eleanor there? And what was she wearing? Alice! Let me get my breath. Is there some ale in that jar? Of course. And how are the boys? And my little Belia? Washed, brushed, and already in bed, mistress. So? Faces. And look at yours! It's all shiny and your eyes are huge. You have a secret, I can tell. Well. Well? Oxford is very impressive. It's full of Christian scholars, some of whom consult with the Talmudic scholars on the, scholars on the religious texts. We don't care. Alice! But she's right, we don't care. <laughs> Something <laughs> happened. Nothing happened. It bloody did. Alice. <laughs> it bloody did. <laughs> I met David of Oxford at Rabbi, Rabbi Moses' house as, we, as arranged, and we discussed the tallage that the king intended to levy on all Jews to pay for decorating his castle. You like him, Miss David. You do. You fancy him. <sighs> Lucretia, mm -hmm. can you send the servant away, please? I could, but she'll only listen at the door. Yes, yes, I would. She'll murder you in your bed one day. I think that's highly unlikely. She'd protect me like a lion if anyone tried that. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> lion, not. Never mind. Not so, <laughs> David of Oxford, one of the richest men in England. That's not why. You fancy him, Miss? Oh, do you ever do any work? It doesn't signify what I feel for him, Alice. Why not? He's married to Muriel. So? Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Exactly. But you, no doubt, were of interest to him. A wealthy widow of 34 with her own thriving business. Her own teeth? Hush, Alice. <laughs> I was saying, and not one, not two, but four healthy children. God has indeed blessed me. If she gets a whiff of your interest, she'll curse you. You see if she doesn't. Is this Muriel a witch? I'm putting ideas into her head. Might as well cook snowballs on the fire. I'm not likely to see David of Oxford again for a while, if ever. Is there any more air? Scene five, Oxford, a few months later, Muriel's house. <coughs> If you're here to persuade me to divorce David, you're wasting your time. Why, Muriel? Why? Because we have been put together by God, and you cannot break that covenant. No, I can't, but you can. <laughs> but I won't. Then he must. Must? You are very confident of your powers of seduction. We both know how this will end. You seem in quite a rush to secure my husband. And why not? He's a good bit older than you, but so handsome, so well connected. He can protect and provide. Must be tough being a widow. And a mother. A mother of four thriving children, clever, strong, my pride and joy.